I don't like nobody. Dogs, horses, fish, roaches, worms, butterflies, ants. Nigga, I don't like nothing. I don't cut it off, DJ. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I done got a little fly beside myself, and nigga came up with a motherfucking song. Say, yeah, I'm the motherfucking police. You niggas wanted a police-ass nigga, so I became a police-ass nigga, nigga. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what the internet wanted. They wanted a Rat Williams-ass nigga, or Uncle Ruckers-type-ass nigga, so I became a Uncle Ruckers-type-ass nigga. Yeah, yeah, they wanted a nigga who talked shit all the time, so I became a shit-talking nigga that they wanted all the time. See, I remember when I came through this motherfucker probably by 2016, 2017 to speak at Orange County Juvenile Detention Center. It was on a Saturday morning, nigga. Drove a long motherfucking way. Didn't get nothing but a $250 gas card plus $500, and I think I split it with three niggas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was on the internet. And wasn't nobody cheering and talking and saying nothing. Y'all say to tell the truth, right? Then I started going to Washington, D.C., working on laws and legislation, going in the offices of Ted Cruz, John Cornyn, Senator Mark Rubio, working with some of the most powerful Jewish attorneys in the country, working to get juvenile life without parole abolished in America because all my niggas out of Beaumont, Port Arthur, Galveston, Dallas, Houston, them niggas were getting 30 and 40 years for shit they were doing at 13 and 14 years old. So I get an opportunity to join the Campaign Fair Citizen for Youth, an organization called ICANN, Incarcerated Children's Advocacy Network. Now, the reason I'm telling y'all this, because Beaumont High School principal wouldn't let me come talk to the kids Friday for some shit I said on the internet. But they'll let that little bitch sexy red go into the school with that booty brown hole, <laughs> pussy popping, nappy head bitch, talking about she fuck with no rubber, she a cum bucket, and all type of motherfucking shit. But they won't let me, little old bitty me that's on the internet playing with real documentations that I really work with children. Not only that, that I really change laws, not just in the state of Texas, but throughout the United States of America. And a motherfucker mad about what I'm saying. See, when I had the bow tie, and I wasn't cussing, I wasn't fussing, and I was telling y'all that 5% of the new motherfucking HIV cases is from ages 13 to 21 in the black community. We got 14-year-old niggas catching AIDS. Y'all wasn't paying attention. They ain't want to hear it. See, I was trying to play like Malcolm. Nigga, I went 11 months without no pussy. <laughs> Y'all bullshitting. It wasn't until Canelo and Mayweather had a fight hanging with these motherfucking Mexicans, Latin kings, and realized, man, I ain't had no pussy in 11 months. That's because I had discovered a purpose. Nigga had got in purpose, but I was broke in a motherfucker. Right. Yeah, all that find your purpose and, and all that type of shit, nigga broke in a motherfucker. And I'm coming to the community every motherfucking day helping poor children. So I'm in the community saying, say, come on, little brother, don't do that. Come on, queen, don't do that. Man, them kids act like they weren't hearing shit. Boy, when they mama and them came in, and they old, and that old nigga come in and say, say, boy, if you don't sit your ugly ass down some motherfucking well, and I saw how he sat his ugly ass down somewhere, and he was ugly. <laughs> Little motherfucker wasn't cute. Next motherfucker come in, say, how did, what kind of day you had, Mr. Charleston? Now I'm off in the projects doing this at a motherfucking after hour spot. In the daytime, it was a youth facility. At nighttime, it was a weed house, whole house, bootleg spot. Gambling spot, and when motherfuckers could come get food. So I'm working with the kids during the daytime, watching their ignorant ass mamas and daddies at nighttime, fighting motherfuckers, ignorant motherfuckers when they get drunk and full of them motherfucking alcohol that they like to drink, 
and listening to that motherfucking music. So sitting behind the bar, I start realizing it's a correlation to these drunk motherfuckers and that music that's coming off that goddamn jukebox. At a certain time of the night, boy, if they play that motherfucker me, throw your sets up, nigga, throw your sets up. Boy, you got an hour and a half for somebody want to kill each other. These niggas done came to the motherfucking club with two little jeans on. <laughs> Basketball shorts up under them two little motherfucking jeans. Four of them got on flip flops and they got guns in the car. One of them only got a girlfriend. The other three don't give a damn by nothing. And they ready to kill somebody. But it's only when these motherfucking songs activate their motherfucking ass. Boy, when you play them love songs, and them girls get out on the floor, go to dancing, and you look, you look around, them niggas be standing in huddles, don't know what to do. I call it nut the butt. They don't know how to slow dance no more. All they know how to do is get in groups of niggas and bound with each other and do the gun sign. They play them motherfucking slow song, them niggas didn't know what to do. So I started paying attention. So after about two weeks of doing what I call, what you dumb niggas don't know, I went to college. Texas Wesleyan University, made the dean's list. I was doing what they call a qualitative study on poor niggas. Poor ignorant niggas. Watch the mamas at day, nighttime, kids at daytime. I start seeing little niggas that'll walk up to another kid and say, hey, let me see that. Oh, you all right, nigga, you ain't got to sneak and record. I don't give a damn about a nigga recording my shit. I'm so ignorant, I ain't done the same shit twice. I don't keep recording, nigga, I don't give a damn. So I start watching kids that will walk up to other kids and say, let me see that and take it. Nigga, he ain't said you can see it shit. Give it back, nigga. And he can't understand. He done done nothing wrong. So guess what? I start calling, man, sit your stupid ass down somewhere. Boy, you ain't supposed to do that. And they start reacting. For real, nigga. What? Nigga, grandmama come in and tell a bunch of motherfuckers, hey, I need y'all to take a bath. Who the feet smelling like that? Grandmama is here. That's his feet smelling like that. Boy, go put them shoes on the back porch and go get in the tub. Now, if you don't go get in the tub, when grandmama come back there and smell them motherfucking feet again, boy, if you don't get your nasty motherfucking ass in that motherfucking tub, don't you jump up and go get in the tub after she done belittled your motherfucking ass because you didn't pay attention the first time she said it. Well, where you get that from, Mr. Charleston, is what the kids would say. Nigga, when I was a little bitty boy, I was listening to Easy E. Nigga, what? We want Easy. What Easy say, nigga? Easy. Why you wear your pants like that? I wear them because it's easy access, baby. When little mama jump up and say, easy, why you cuss like that? What easy say? I cuss like that to get my point across. So nigga, Dr. King, you a now motherfucker who can't stand in front of a bunch of kids who love rap music and listen to rap music and come from the ghetto, if you can't tell them to sit their motherfucking ass down somewhere, you can't get their motherfucking attention. That go for the school teacher. That go for the principal. That go for the police. Police got to rough a nigga up. Nigga, you run from the police, you don't know you got an ass woman coming. Don't run. Automatically. Nigga, back in my day, when a nigga ran from the police, he was running to get rid of something, throw something, avoid getting an extra charge about something. These niggas now just running because they don't want to go to jail. I'm starting to realize, and I just got a question, guys, gangsta ass nigga, when did niggas stop wanting to go to jail? I thought niggas wanted to go to jail. Because, nigga, when you got out of jail, you got to walk a little different. After you done made bond, and the rest of your friends ain't been to jail. Nigga, you done been to jail, and it's rough in jail. Niggas get raped in jail. 
Niggas get violated, strong arm and took, and none of that happened to you, and you get to come home to regular people holding your dick, telling a nigga with a job, been taking care of his kids, how he couldn't have made it in prison, and he ain't a real man. No, these niggas come home and nigga, we playing domino, friendly game of domino at the family reunion, and he hollering 15 nigga, Bobo Blast, skinny legs and shout, shout, and fuck up the table with them big arms. And tell us, civilized people, that nigga, we was at the doctor when she said she was pregnant, and we got to see the sonogram, we got to hear the baby. Kick in the belly, nigga, when they put the motherfucking things on the belly, and they go, doo, 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 doo. we got to hear that. You didn't hear none of that, nigga. And you come out here and tell us we ain't no real man because we couldn't make it in a maximum security prison. <laughs> well, maybe I couldn't, nigga. You can't make it out here, nigga. When all of us leave this park, because that's where we have these conversations, at the park, maybe at the barber shop, at a domino table. But it's never amongst the presence of women. Because the women go chime in and let them niggas know, niggas, shut up. I was sending you money. When you went to jail, you didn't have no bond money. I had to put up my car no money. My car got, so the broad go have all kind of story to tell. So these niggas come around us where they can't be rebutted. So here we are, we standing out there, these niggas telling us this shit. And he might got a nice car. Saying it, but them ain't his car key. <laughs> when he get ready to go home, talking all that bravado, tough nigga shit out there with us, trying to scare us and impress us. When he go home, and it's been hot outside, and he think it's too hot in the house, he can't touch the thermostat. Think about them bras who pay the bill. Nigga, she got it cold. You know, she might got it set at a temperature. And depending on what time of the season is, that motherfucker set at 75, where normal people keep that bitch so they can maintain the electricity bill. The nigga down at the park don't know nothing about this. He just down there talking shit. Nigga been in prison 15, 20 years, don't know where to keep the meter at to keep the motherfucking electricity bill, where it's a consistent motherfucking me rate each month and it ain't fluctuating. He don't know nothing about this type of shit. He just down there talking, trying to impress another bunch of motherfuckers who don't know what to do when they sign a lease. Now, I know I'm hitting below the bill, but they asked me to tell the truth. See, we idolizing niggas at the park. Now, I don't want to name no names. We idolizing niggas that some hell of odd motherfucking niggas in the prison system and in the streets. But if you ask them niggas, well, what do they give you when you go to the apartments down there and you sign your lease? What's the first items that they give you? They don't know they give you the two mailbox key with the two dead boat and top lock key. Them niggas don't know nothing about that, and they don't know nothing about the slip that you got to fill out to go make sure ain't nothing broke in the apartment conflict before you start utilizing light sockets. They don't know nothing about that motherfucking shit. But they go stick their motherfucking chest out and won't get credit to where credit is due. Well, nigga, where the credit is due at? The black woman, whether it's their mama, their sister, they auntie, uh, a dumbass prison guard that done liked him, uh, or whatever it is, it's a black woman. Cause nigga, when I start going to visitation, visiting them niggas down in prison, uh, I look around in that motherfucking visitation room, and it be all women. I don't see no homeboys. I don't see none of them niggas at the game. I don't see none of them niggas from the block. When it's time to eat Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner, I don't see none of them niggas at nobody mama's table after a nigga get killed. But these be the same niggas. These be the same motherfucking niggas when a nigga get killed, they go come put on a motherfucking me uniform. What you mean that uniform? They go put on their gang colors. They gonna come disrespect every motherfucking body at the funeral who done paid for the motherfucker. 
No, 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 no. They're going to come disrespect mama, grandmama, and everybody else who's been living for the Lord, representing their motherfucking hood, and these motherfuckers ain't put on now a motherfucking dollar for the motherfucking funeral. They ain't going to help get no motherfucking me too stone. when we go visit this motherfucker. He ain't just dirt. No, there's a lot of niggas just dirt. Nigga out there at that motherfucking graveyard. Can't nobody get them no motherfucking tombstone. And they done put in a lot of work for the motherfucking hood. Nigga, they kids go to school, try to play a little football. They got the raggedy shoes on the football team. Nigga, baby mama got to try to fuck to keep him on the football team. And by the way, boy, don't nobody get more pussy than that motherfucking little league football coach. That nigga that cut hair at the barber shop. The nigga that bootleg liquor and the nigga that sell <laughs> Boy, now, if you can work on cars a little bit, nigga, and you half ass handsome, and, and, and goddamn me, you can conversate without looking like a pervert. If you wait long enough, you too can fuck too, nigga. Just hold on. Now, that's for the nigga still know how to fix an alternator, still know how to fix a motherfucking me water pump, still know how to go in and diagnose that motherfucking transmission. Just hold on, nigga, between her and that motherfucking car and the motherfucking bill, she go break weak somewhere. Just hold on, nigga. She go come to you at one point in time, she go need a motherfucking payment. And nigga, one thing we know about the mechanic, nigga, he take pussy payments for down payment. He ain't no different than the milkman. I'm y'all say tell the truth, right? Yeah, nah, he ain't no different than the motherfucking milkman. Nigga, back in them 60s and the 70s, nigga, when milk had to be delivered to the door, nigga, you think the milkman wasn't fucking? Nigga, you think the yard man ain't fucking? I don't give a fuck what he don't, what he look like, nigga. He come to meet a need. And then the nigga that can meet a need, nigga, can creep up on it. Nigga, you can't cut yard straight where them motherfucking lines be straight and the rest of the neighbors be impressed with you cutting the yard, nigga. You can't fix no alternator. Gang sign throwing, motherfucker. You good with your hands with throwing gang sign, nigga. You can't twist no motherfucking tool to get nothing accomplished in the house where a woman can feel like you can do it. No, nah, no, nah, nigga, most of you niggas ain't heard you can do it since your mama was jumping up and down, hollering you can do it, and she knew you couldn't do it. Yeah, I was, I ain't bullshit, nigga, I used to run track. I used to run track like a motherfucker. My mama used to have me dress so motherfucking pretty, looking like I'm fit to win like a motherfucker with all the extra shit she got me. And I knew, I knew how to get out there, do all that kind of shit, and be in last place. Nigga, my mama be up there, just, baby, you can do it. I used to walk off the field. Coach him, you a quitter. Yeah, I was an uncoachable little boy. I quit like a motherfucker. Yeah, I used to hate losing. Competitive little motherfucker. So when these niggas get online, and go to fucking with me, I get in my feelings sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I get in my feelings sometimes. Cause I say, man, nigga, y'all nigga was just talking. Nigga, do y'all know what it's like to get a woman pregnant? Scrap it. Do y'all niggas know what it's like to get a woman pregnant? She say she pregnant, and you stay there from the time she say she pregnant to the time the motherfucker get grown? No, that's a hell of a different kind of feeling. And then, nigga, you done burned the shame. You done went through the test of what dad and them done went through. Most niggas at some point break weak, run off on the kids, fuck the kids. If it ain't nothing but out of shame, shame like a motherfucker, nigga, because he can't take care of. And don't have one of them down points, nigga, where you can't provide no money. And you was a cheating, rotten motherfucker, they gonna kick you in your ass. And they bet she better not get a nigga that can got some rims on the car, and you driving a Nissan Maxima, and you got to go over there and pick the kids up, and you got a donut on the tire. Nigga wanna quit. And they kicking you in the ass. You ain't got no motherfucking job because you can't stop smoking weed. You can't pass no motherfucking drug test. And you don't care enough about the kids to stop smoking weed to get no motherfucking drug test. But everything's centered around the kids. Niggas can relate. And you better not have no motherfucking kids elsewhere. See, niggas talk that shit. But boy, if you got them inside and outside kids, you better not be online fucking with me, nigga. You got some kids in the house that's yours. And over there, you got some more other kids that ain't yours. 
Don't you know what them outside kids going through, nigga? Because they don't get what the inside kids get, nigga. They get, nigga, they get neglected. They feeling fucked up while you online posting, sounding like a hell of a nigga to the rest of the world. <laughs> nigga, my little mama said something to me today that body rocked me. She said, I could write another story about you. You say you don't lie, steal, or cheat. The nigga lied to his main woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought about Dr. King when she said that. Yeah, I thought about Dr. King. I said, well, shit, he was a no good riding motherfucker, too. But most niggas is a no good rot motherfucker with that dick. He said, come on now. He wouldn't wait for the punchline. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. A nigga only a low down, dirty, rotten motherfucker with that dick. Because he can't control it. Well, he can. Some choose not to. But when a nigga was taught wrong, you learn to do better. They say, man, when you know to do better, you learn to do better. Man, you're a lying motherfucker, not when you're a man. Because we struggle with what we know, what we feel, and what we believe. And if we ain't in the circle of the right niggas, nigga, we rule by what we feel. Man. That's why most niggas kill it. Most niggas slap a bitch. Most niggas angry all the motherfucking time at work, at the ballpark, because he ruled and governed by what he feel, not by what he believe. So here it is. I get online at time talking like I'm a hell of a motherfucking nigga. Yeah, nigga, I'm just like the rest of y'all. <laughs> yeah, nigga, yeah. But nigga, this is what I know. Nigga, in all things, nigga, the flaws is factored in. In all things, nigga, the flaws are factored in. Your greatness, your purpose, your success, your flaws is factored into all of that. But if you can't identify and admit to your flaws, then that's the flaw. Yeah, that's why the alcoholic anonymous say first thing you got to do when you come in here, motherfucker, you got to admit that I have a motherfucking problem. And I had a nigga tell me, nigga, one time, nigga, that, that really crushed my soul. He said, nigga, when I look in the mirror, I have to go back and apologize to every woman that I ever been with because I done done them wrong. That's a reality that every black man have to face because, nigga, we've been taught to do wrong from the beginning. From the beginning. So I think back, nigga, back when a nigga was 11, 12 years old, sneaking, trying to listen to rap music. Two Live Crew. One of the most historical rap groups, rap bands in America, because they had a Supreme Court ruling on their lyrics. Fuck Martinez. Fuck, fuck Martinez. Yeah, that song there is the reason we have to have parental advisory labels put on music. Them niggas changed the laws with that shit they was talking. Me fuck you long time. Me so horny. Nigga, we were listening to that shit at 11, 12 years old. They was turning us out, nigga, freaking us. Then, nigga, they come with a motherfucking song called, Hey, we want some poor say. The nigga, I, boy, I was, boy, I remember. <laughs> Me and my homies like to play this game. Some call it Amtrak, but some call it the train. We all were lined up in a single file line. Now stop right there. There you go. Now we 11, 12 years old. Nigga, what, we, what you think we start doing? Trying to run trains, nigga. We didn't know how to responsibly run trains. We just know one little girl like one little boy, and there's five of us. And all of us got a hard dick, and she naked. Nigga, guess what we doing? We trying to plot and plan. Leave the door open. Well, just ask her. See if she'll do it. Because guess what, nigga? It's just like when they came with the last dragon, Bruce Leroy. And we seen Bruce Leroy and Shona. 
We were trying that, wasn't we? So why not when the music get introduced, we ain't trying the music. Nigga, it's a nigga out here just repeated the shit. Nigga, we know what we were doing, but we didn't. But we acting out because this what that was. Those was instructions, nigga, on how to free. It ain't no different, nigga, when Master P came with that motherfucking ghetto dope. Remember me crack like this? Ghetto dope and taught a nigga how to cook crack from step one to step ten. A nigga was in college cooking crack. <laughs> Niggas getting off with warehouse jobs cooking crack. Niggas didn't even know nothing about nothing. Start trying to cook crack and become crack dealers, catching cases, fucking their life up. Because we had instructions, because we wasn't getting proper instructions at home. Mama and them were tired, dad and them were gone. Or we had some bullshit uncles that was some bullshit niggas that were just leaving some fucked up impressions upon our brain as he passed through mama and grandmama and them house. Or we had some daddies who were some hell of a niggas who were just absent and we were just trying to fill the shoes and live up to who we thought our daddies and them was and our uncles and them was with no motherfucking instruction listening to these goddamn rappers. So we go from goddamn me talking about, hey, we want some pussy uh, to a minute, nigga, a kid in play. Y'all remember the kid? Y'all remember? The nigga? And then it was a whole bunch of summertime, nigga, a MC Hammer. Nigga with the George Obertini motherfucking shoe with the motherfucking silver tips. Yeah, yeah, now, then, then here come Bobby Brown, nigga. Now we rocking the Gumbies. Then we had Kwame for a minute, nigga. We had the sickle dye poke shirts, nigga, with the blonde hair dye. We was mimicking the culture, remember? Nigga, wasn't nobody dying. We were slow dancing with girls. Nigga learned what the two step slow dance. Lean to this side. You remember? Nigga just learned how to slow dance. Then we had that motherfucking nigga come with doing the butt. And ever since then, we ain't seen what a hoe look like yet. They all but turn their butts to it when they get excited. Hey! You can be in Miami walking down that motherfucking drive and see a bunch of, hey, it's a bunch of bitches with their butts up. Doing the butt, uh, 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 sex says, sex says. Yeah, if you want to see the butt all night long. And I think niggas start saying pussy ain't got no face after that. Boy, niggas start chasing them ugly girls with them big old butts. Uh, with that short little old bit of hair that used to be in the ponytail right there that could run fast with no shoes on. Ooh wee. It took her a while for her to blossom into what she is or what she became. But boy, back then, all they had was butts, but we had that song that we were listening to. And then at one point in time, the music had got so freaky, niggas started dancing like this. Y'all remember? Oh, niggas started dancing like that. When I came home in 1998, with that Usher slow shit they were singing, nigga was fucking on the dance floor. Now this is before the Pretty Ricky group, y'all. Now y'all got to remember that Pretty Ricky group went crazy. Them nigga was dancing on their heads in the club, freaking and spinning and popping their hips and dick dancing. Them niggas dance moves was outrageous. When I come home, they fucking like a motherfucker on the dance floor. Boy, for the longest, 98 to 2000, nigga didn't need no pussy. Nigga get drunk and get on the dance floor. Way they was dancing back then, you would come on the dance floor. They were bumping up against them. <laughs> nigga come on the dance floor. Then, all of a sudden, a phenomenon came. Strip club. I don't know where this shit came from. It just came out of nowhere. They stopped the Freak Neat. They stopped the motherfucking me Galveston Beach parties. So it wasn't no freaking nowhere. Party, the house parties were getting shot up. So it wasn't nowhere for niggas to freak it other than them dance flows. Then all of a sudden, emergence comes strip clubs. It started out as niggas just going up to the thing. One dollar in his pocket, looking at her, and she danced like a motherfucker, whole song. 
And boy, you can stand up there the whole song just looking. And she do that little thing right there and take that dollar. That's when it used to be the motherfucker. Because you would have to say, well, hey, she would get off stage, come talk to you, ask, can you buy a drink? And she said, hey, you want a lap dance? Now, back then, $20. She isn't go over there, no. <laughs> Every motherfucking song, non, non-negotiable. And a nigga wanted more than three, four lap dances. Because back then, they didn't dance fast. It wasn't a bunch of hurting your dick, bending him up. Boy, back then, they, used to, they were still slow grinding on it. Boy, was damn near like y'all were fucking. I used to sit back and see which nigga, after he got a lap dance, I'd be in that motherfucker eyeballing it like a motherfucker. Seeing which nigga that get that motherfucking lap dance, go to the bathroom afterward. That's the one I want. Yeah, nigga get there, go back and sit with it, buddy. Nigga, please. Yeah, 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 I'm trying to shoot my pistol and get on out of here. It's like tricking. Yeah, I come from the crack area, but nigga, you can ride home late at night through the hood, see your homeboy, ain't it? You been wanting to fuck since middle school, still half ass fine, walking down the boulevard and get her for that $20 shot. And don't, I just, I, you know what I'm talking about, nigga. And don't nobody know but you and her. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole bunch of you niggas in the crowd. I got them kind of secrets. <laughs> yeah, lady. Yeah, if you got you one of them dope boy nigga, that's why this nigga laughing like a motherfucker. If you got you one of them dope boy nigga, just know uh, trapping and tricking go hand in hand. Every nigga got him a motherfucking dope fiend, crack smoking girlfriend he been having since he started selling dope in eighth grade. Yeah, she ain't just over there cleaning up. <laughs> yeah, now nah, we, we gonna tell the truth and keep it real, ain't we? Yeah, yeah, I ain't not, I'm, don't tell all the secrets, nigga. They done put me on stand and swore me in, nigga, so I gotta tell it all. Cause guess what? Uh, yeah, 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 nigga, you won't know how great you is, nigga, till you die and be in a casket and everybody stand up there and, and say things uh, about you and that woman stay silent. Yeah, 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 see, it's a whole lot of Coretta Scott King, my nigga, they ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah, they gonna let the world thank you, this kind of motherfucking nigga, nigga, but they ain't gonna say nothing. Nigga, Coretta Scott King never said nothing about Dr. King, never mumbled one word, and he really was a whole-monging preacher. You got to know, listen, uh, the FBI said, this is real documents, so we telling the truth. The FBI said, the nigga compared to everybody that they listened to and eavesdropped on, Malcolm X was a saint. But they won't tell us about Malcolm. Malcolm was committed and dedicated, went and prayed, ate, went home, went to the hotel every night and called his wife. Nigga Martin Luther King was having fun like a motherfucker throughout this motherfucking civil rights movement. And if you go back and watch the movie Selma, unless you know history, unless you understand uh, the truth uh, to a story, there's one part in the movie well, when somebody called a house, you know, back then, niggas in the house cell phone, them hoes that like you and fuck with, they got to call the house and, and hope that you answer the phone. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was a lot of time that, uh, in this one scene, somebody called a house. Well, most of the time when somebody called a house, it was, fuck you, nigga, we're going to blow up your house, we're going to kill you. But she didn't say nothing this time, and he had to go on the road, and they gave you a hint, but it's for only those that know. So why you saying that, nigga? Cause I'm gonna tell the truth, nigga. Uh, uh, most niggas do it. We struggle with trying to do it, not to do it, uh, but most niggas do it. Uh, it's the nature of a man. Only in Western culture, only in Western culture, uh, do they promote the idea of that. So the black man, he struggled like a motherfucker. He struggled like a motherfucker, going in the house every night, being with one woman. When she go to sleep, shut up, nigga. Listen to the story. Shut up, nigga. <laughs> they trying to stop me, lady. Yeah, they, they trying to stop me. I got to let me tell my story, nigga. I've been squabbling with mine today, too, nigga. Shut up. 
Yeah, let me make, yeah, let me get this off my chest. Nigga, yeah, I've been squabbling with mine too. We all in the same boat. Nigga, I know she brought you here to try to make up, you know. Uh, ain't nothing like breaking up and fucking. That shit become just as addictive as getting roses. Nigga, having a good fight and going home to fuck like y'all just starting over. Uh, yeah, yeah, that become just as addictive as roses. So, nigga going to have with the woman. Soon as she leave, this motherfucker turning on porn. Not me, but most niggas. Right? Jacking that motherfucking dick out. I already know, nigga, we all live. Yeah, nigga with that dick full of shit, everybody know that. Any woman you done been with go tell us you full of shit. So, nigga go in. He can't think of nothing to do exciting with his woman. Because all his life, he been taught to think that his value is his dick. Man, I just got to put that dick on him. Boy, nigga think once he put that dick on him, he's the rule and he got him. And that's true. Amen. For about six months to a year. <laughs> nigga, once that effect of that good motherfucking dick wore off, and the pressures of life begin to weigh on her. The responsibilities that she trying to hold on to, uh, nigga, she start getting mad at you <laughs> with that good motherfucking dick sometimes. Cause now, by now, the dick only good when we getting into it. Dick ain't good consistently, nigga. Cause you know why? You jacking the dick off when she gone. Yeah, nigga, be quiet. Don't tell on yourself. All you got to do is just be quiet. <laughs> peak and not speak, nigga. I'm telling you, just peak and not speak. So, you done start fucking, what she don't know, you done start fucking at seven, eight, nine years old. Little dick getting hard, you been fucking with this little dick since you seven, eight, nine years old. This little dick tired. It's wore out. This little dick done had plenty of fun. It done been to all the rap concerts. This little dick done had threesomes. This little dick done had twosomes. This little dick done just, just done been woed out at the playground. Now this little dick in a relationship. And this little dick plan on being in this relationship with this woe out dick from 30 till death. <laughs> This little, he plan on being in a relationship with this woe out dick from 30 to death. He don't eat right. He don't work out. He ain't going to the doctor. He don't drink water. And this little motherfucker still try to be a little active with just a little life that he got. So when it's time for this little motherfucker to go to the park and get on the swing, <laughs> say this. Do y'all remember? Nigga go to the park as a kid. It's some little niggas can go to swinging by themselves. And that motherfucker go to moving. Boy, it's some little niggas say, Mommy, come push me. Daddy, you come push me. And they need somebody back there pushing. And they can go. This little motherfucker needs somebody to push it now. It used to can go to the park and swing like a motherfucker and get going. And you can't make me believe that they ain't playing on us with them gas station dick pills, guys. We done wore him out. We done wore this motherfucker out. We was in prison. Some of us was in prison jacking off to the new guards who was coming on the line. We jacking that dick off as soon as she get to the window to look in and check, we come. We done freaked out with this dick. Some of us, goddamn me, some of these niggas, they done run over to the homosexual line with this dick. That's the only time it get hard when they get some of that booty. Y'all say let's tell the truth. Because we started too early. 
We started too early, nigga. Hunching with them cousins and doing all we started too early, nigga. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. It's supposed to be, supposed to be for the babies. So, nigga, we had them uncles who was exposing us to that shit. We started watching them motherfucking videos, my nigga. Nigga, we saw it too early. So here we are in our 30s. Here we are in our motherfucking 30s, nigga. And when we get on the swing, we need help. Some nigga saying, baby, suck it to get it hard. Baby, play with it to get it hard. Some nigga need porn to get it hard. Uh, nigga boy say, I'm throwing rocks, and they told me, nigga, hit dogs, I always holler. If I got a bunch of motherfucking rocks, and I can't see out there, and I just throw it, and them nigga, arr, arr, it's some nigga out there hollering. Nigga, I'm finna tell you what to get if you just listen. <laughs> you hear I keep saying we and us? Yeah, yeah, and the other time I be saying you niggas. Yeah. And the other time I be saying you niggas, nigga. So we go to them motherfucking gas stations and we trust that Muhammad and, and Zahir and them is giving us some shit. Say, let me get a uh, 40 on pump three. A uh, three pack of them white diamonds. What's that right there? Blue Rhino. It worked? Yeah, yeah, it said it worked. He gonna tell you it worked, cause they making them. Yeah, they, they work. Yeah, yeah, give me one of them motherfuckers. <laughs> Nigga ain't stopping to think that me and this motherfucker say 97,000 milligrams. <laughs> and that motherfucker big. Man, 97,000 milligrams of what? Nigga don't say nothing. Get her and take it. And boy, take that motherfucker. What it do to you, nigga? Somebody just, you nigga doing all that talking. When you take it, what it do to you? Like a motherfucker. The kind of headache you want to tell somebody. You want to tell somebody. You want to go in there with that hard dick and that throbbing head, saying, baby, I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> she put it on that dick, looking up at you, trying to, trying to get it ready. She don't know you about to die. So when niggas started dying at 57, niggas started dying at 62, niggas dying at 50, and nigga, we sitting at that motherfucking barrier, and I'm looking at all of us, nigga, all of us partners, and I'm sitting at that motherfucking barrier. Nigga, once we go, once we go get them roses off the casket, and we all huddle back up, walking back to the car, I asked them nigga, say, you think of them dick pills that killed him? <laughs> nigga, hold on, let me go. I see they trying to wave me off stage. They trying to get me off stage. I'm like Bobby Brown, nigga, when he got the microphone and they had to come down to drag him off because he didn't want to stop performing. They shouldn't have put them rap niggas on stage before I got on here, no way. <laughs> nigga trying to entertain y'all with that motherfucking goddamn rap music. That was 15 minutes of my motherfucking show. I got a truth to tell, and I done swore to tell the motherfucking truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. There go the rapping nigga right there. There you go right there with them glasses on right there in the jewelry. Y'all put the spotlight on him. Let his rap crew know he done served on the motherfucking jewelry to tell on Charleston White. And by the way, nigga, nigga, I don't want to talk to you. We'll talk after the motherfucking show. You been trying to talk to me the whole motherfucking night. Nigga, let me just say this so I can get out of here, nigga. My question, my question to the black community, my question to the black community, my nigga, and these G niggas, and these real niggas, and these street niggas, and, and, and all these niggas that uh, uphold who they used to be and not who they are today. At what point, at what point do the hood, do the streets release the black man so he can become a better father, so he can become a better man, a better brother, a better neighbor? At what point do a nigga get to say, homie, I ain't it no more? And if somebody break into my house, it's all right for me to call the police. And I know who done it. If a nigga kill my kids, do I throw my life away and I still got other kids? 
if a nigga hit my car and I got car insurance and they don't, and they, it, it, do I not be able to call the police? So niggas talking, no snitching. We done got so gangster, we done got so hard, we done put the, the no snitching. And by the way, these are mafia codes. These are codes that niggas that was in the Italian mafia, Sammy the Bull and many others who couldn't even uphold. So we put these codes on our children. Nigga 13, 14 years old, all of us go commit a crime. And my mama come in here and ask me what happened. Am I supposed to say, mama, I don't know, I can't snitch. And this woman got to go get me a lawyer. The lawyer come in and says, who did it? I'm not supposed to say I can't, do I, I'm not going to snitch. So I became free from the codes. I became free from the bondage of homeboyism. Uh, I became free from the oppression of gangsterism. Because who oppresses us more than the gangster codes and the gangster street ethics that we still uphold and propagate? promote and project to our children. So I created these characters to come on, come on stage and be funny uh, just to promote being a black man in America. It's cool. It's all right to call the police, nigga, so you don't have to go to jail. It's all right for a kid that's getting picked on in school to go tell their teacher I'm being picked on so they don't have to hurt and kill nobody and shoot up a school. At what point and at what age do the hood releases the black man from those hood obligations and responsibilities so he can be a black man to his community and build his village. I thank y'all. Y'all have a great night.